heading southeast from Kolobi Vary on the number six highway. We first turned onto Highway 198 and then onto Highway number 20. After a ride of about two hours, we finally arrived at Pilsen, the fourth largest city in the Czech Republic. The city is well known for its rich history in the art of beer making, which dates back to the end of the 13th century. But before we wet our lips, let's delve deep down into this town, literally. But before we go, let's first take care of some safety issues. In the days of all, every single person in the town of Pilsner had a cellar. In fact, there are 25 kilometer long stretch of cellars, which is where I'm going right now. They've been connected now. And 18 is actually open to the public. So Pilsner, extremely well known for brewing world-class beer. I'm fascinated. Beer galore. These tunnels are the result of the connecting of cellars and underground breweries that once belonged to the citizens of Pilsen. The earliest part was constructed a thousand years ago and the entire labyrinth stretches like a spider web forming large underground networks below the town. The part of the underground labyrinth that is open to the public is a museum dedicated to the city's history. Another interesting fact is that there are so many wells in the labyrinth. Some are abandoned and others are still in use. So every family had their own well, and there are two reasons for this. The first one is having your own well means you have a source of water to make beer. And the second one is during times of seizures, they had their own source of drinking water, which is extremely safe because you really don't know when you have the chance to go outside and get water again. Although no longer functioning as breweries or shelters, the tunnels are a testament to what once was. Once upon a time, almost every household made their own beer, as the Czech king Wenceslas II granted the citizens the right to brew beer during the 13th century. The quality of this home-brewed beer, however, may be called into question. Beer lovers, it's time to stay tuned as we get into the refreshing business of beer tasting. This time on... Yes! Surprisingly, the flourishing of individual uh, beer breweries did not create really good beer. So what they did was they put their minds together to try and create the ultimate beer. In 1842, they did that in this exact same beer brewery that I'm at right now. So I'm going to try beer that is exactly the same as that that, that was brewed 170 years ago. After intensive experimentation, the brewery developed its unique technique here in this very cellar. This cellar stretches 9 kilometers and is capable of keeping 7,000 barrels. Walking through the cellar, I could feel cool air on my face. I was once told that the chilly air in the cellar is essential for giving Pilsen beer its unique taste and flavor, which is due to a special technique called bottom fermentation. This technique combines the pale color from new malts, Pilsen's remarkably soft water, noble hops from nearby Saas, and special lagering. Although production has been taken over by modern workshops above ground, the seller is still making beer to preserve its original quality. Right. 
takes a oh, while. Oh my goodness. And it's frothy Pivo time, baby! Okay, so I'm gonna try this Pilsner Yurkel beer, right? Mm, all the right. first time. Now let me give this a shot. This is good. No, um, I'm not drunk. I'm just kidding with you. But this is uh, extremely good. Slightly bitter beer, and uh, the taste extremely fresh, extremely cold. I am not a beer connoisseur, but I am certainly a beer fan right now. So with my friend here, Yuri, okay. Yuri or George in English, and he is uh, the spokesperson here and also an expert on this. So I'm going to ask you a question. What makes this beer? Uh, special compared to other beers. Okay, out of all Pils type beers, okay. uh, this beer is the bitter, the most bitter beer from all. Most bitter beer? Yeah. Is that a good it thing? <laughs> it's a good thing. Yeah. Okay. There's something that we measure and we call it drinkability. Mm. And if, if you drink this beer, you kind of uh, feel thirsty on your uh -huh. tongue, and you okay. need to drink some more. It's kind of magic of this beer. Okay. So do you still uh, brew? Pilsner beer in these oak barrels? Yeah, but we still preserve in the tradition. Okay. And we maintain the tradition for two reasons. One, it's okay. uh, very nice for tourists, of course. Mm. But the second reason is we want to preserve the same taste of okay. the beer as it was uh, 160 years ago. Okay. And in order to do so, we are still continuing in this traditional production in the wooden barrels. Mm -hmm. And uh, a special panel of uh, beer experts mm -hmm. and former brewmasters from the brewery is still comparing and tasting the beer, whether okay. it tastes the same from the cylindro conical tanks up there. Upstairs. We use it as a benchmark mm. for the taste of the beer because we want to preserve it. Nazdravi. Cheers and check, right? Yeah, cheers and check. Nazdravi. Beer is regarded by the Czechs themselves as their national drink, and Pilsner beer is one of the two major types of beer originating in the Czech Republic. The other one is actually Budweiser. In all Czech restaurants, beer gardens and clubs, quality beer is an essential part of the dining experience. Drinking beer while watching folk dancers perform in their traditional costumes? What could be more enjoyable? <laughs> 